Hello and Happy New Year and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. Now as you can see, Malcolm's not here. He's got some weird gross eye thing going on. So instead we have Malk 2.0. Hello. So let's start the new year off with a cracker. Let's see what I did there. Yeah, great. Anyway, here it is, the long-awaited bike. Now this bike was supposed to be released a year ago. And it's finally here, so it better be worth it. Indeed. So let's roll the intro and let's get cracking. Crack! <laughs> oh, he swapped. Very good. Felt weird. Very good. Oh, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the keen-eyed amongst you will look at this and go, well, it's just the same as the 125 and the 200. Which is good, because that's part of the attraction. But the most important difference is under there. And we'll come on to that in a little while. Now, we just could say that the Royal Alloy has a, a new, bigger engine. But let's play a game of spot the difference. Ooh, games. Fun. <laughs> so, here we have two Royal Alloy GPs. One of them is a 125, one of them is the 300. One's got a number one on it, I don't know which, one of them's got a number two on it. And here is the rules of the game. It's just a little thing you can play along at home and we will reveal the answer in the next video. So, what I want you to do is have a close look. We're gonna show you from various different angles and see if you can tell which one is the 125 and which one is the 300. So this is the front angle, and go. You from the first time I saw ya, you were not like the others. A cool kind of melody. You rattled my cage without warning, kept it up right till the morning. A new kind of ecstasy. You found a different side of me, the one I like to be. A different side of me, yeah. You'll find a different side of me, like someone pretty need. A different side of me, yeah. Okay, if you want to let us know in the comments section below which one you think is the 125cc or the new 300cc. Let's see how you get on. And the person with the most correct answers and the reasons why you think they are different and why they are which one they say they are or aren't or something, you will get one of our mugs. So, go if you want a mug. If you don't, then give it to someone. Right then, and back to the main event. Well, the Royal Alloy GP300 uses the Vespa GTS 278cc four-stroke, four-valve, liquid-cooled single-cylinder engine, developing 21 and a half horsepower. And 17 pound-foot of torque, which means a top speed of around 80 to 85 miles an hour. And a 0 to 60 of, well, we'll find out a little bit later. Now, the reason I can't give you a 0 to 60 at the moment is because the Royal Alloy homologation just don't issue that kind of information. So we're gonna to have to find out for ourselves. 
I prefer that way. With Royal Alloy moving away from the SIM engine to the tried and tested Vespa engine in the 300, they're also using the Magneti Morelli EFI system. This is an EFI system used by many manufacturers such as Harley Davidson, as well as throughout the motorsport industry. Okay, the measurements are the same as the 200, which is 1.8 metres long. 620 millimetres wide. And 1.1 metres tall. However, the weight is a different matter having that bigger, heavier 300cc engine in it, meaning the wet weight is 152 kilos, but it is an all-metal scooter, except, of course, for that front fender and the glove box. And it still has that 11-litre fuel tank and the only storage being in the glove box. Which houses your toolkit, a USB and a, a hearing aid? No, not really. That's for filling up the oil. Interesting. Or standing at the side of the road having a pee. Shiwi? Is it a shiwi, maybe? I don't know. And that is where the fuel goes. Brakes are the same as the 200cc with a 220mm front and rear discs with a double piston front and single piston rear calipers, both using the Bosch ABS system. However, due to the extra weight of the 300 engine, they've beefed up the front suspension with an extra centimetre of length and stronger springs, which also means the ride is more pleasant. One big difference is the tyres. Where the raw alloys of old use the CST block tyres... For the 300, they've changed to Tim Sun road tyres, which do actually give a better feel on the road. So then, let's start it up, take it for a ride and see how good it is. chat as usual. Ah, what did we think of that? Well, I have to say, I was blimmin' impressed. I didn't think it was going to be a huge difference over the 200, but actually it really, really is. There's a significant difference. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, the, the suspension is a lot more forgiving. It's not as harsh, shall we say. I um, think it's part that suspension and part the tyres. The fact they've gone with these road tyres and not the blocky tyres, it just feels much smoother to ride. And as you say, 
the suspension is forgiving. It actually does something. It's not. Yeah, it's not it like It feels like really smooth. A board. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Very impressed. And that little bit of difference on that um, suspension, I think, has made one hell of a difference. I mean, the, the other thing I really liked about it was the, the responsiveness of the engine is, you know, phenomenal. Really, you know, it's real crisp. Which... It picks up great. Yeah, yeah, it's instant power. Woo, and you're there. Getting up to speed, not a problem. Didn't have any issues whatsoever. Now, of course, we couldn't do a top speed run because for two reasons. One, that would be illegal because we don't ride over 70 miles an hour on a dual carriageway or 60 miles an hour on a single track road as per the UK law. And it's a new engine, so we didn't want to thrash it. Now, we did do a 0 to 60. Um, did you count on the thing? I apologise at this stage if there are some ambient noises. There is some person who seems to think he can do everything in reverse in his forklift truck. Because he's constantly going backwards, by the sounds of it. I don't think he ever goes forwards. <laughs> really annoying. But anyway, we'll bypass that, so hopefully you can block that out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I did have a criticism. And that is these mirrors. Now, although they look quite nice, they're just not long enough on the stalks. And you find yourself doing that to look. You don't have to just glance. You actually have to physically move around your arm to look. So I'd like the mirror stalks to be just two inches longer. That's all. Just two inches. I think that's, that'd be enough. Other than that, I don't really have anything to complain about. Um, um, so then on to MPG figures. Well, MPG figures are a little bit lacking. Um, <laughs> however, there is a figure of around 80 to 90 being banded around. So even if you get 70, that's still pretty impressive for 300, I think. That's half decent, right? Half yeah. decent. Yeah, I don't think there's any issues with that whatsoever. Um, if, of course, uh, you are like me, 16 stone, then maybe you're getting the lower end of that. If you're 10 stone, like him, then maybe you'll get the higher end of the MPG. Uh, it depends, obviously, on circumstances. Of course, depends on the road, depends on whether it's windy, depends on whether there's snowflakes about. And I mean the little white fluffy ones, not the ones that Yeah, I mean, you're a bit about. more aerodynamic mm -hmm. than me, even though you're a bit heavier, so. Is it my nose? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, exactly, yeah. If you've got one and you've managed to do an MPG test, then let us know in the comments below, please. So, yeah, I'm sorry about mentioning that snowflakes. I better not do that. But those that are offended by anything that's got a motor in it. Yeah, we can't mention that. However, if you are of the snowflake variety, then the CO2 figures are really impressive because they've got one. Minuscule. Possibly. Uh, again, this is information that is not forthcoming at this moment in time. <laughs> they don't tend to release those kind of figures. It has some CO2s. Not that many, but it's got some. OK, talking about servicing now then. So servicing, there's been a bit of a, you know, equity pickledy mix up with what mileage is, is what and when by the manufacturers. But Mark will explain a little bit of that in more detail. OK, well, traditionally, Royal Alloy 125 and 200 had a first service set at 300 miles or 500 kilometres, and then 1,000, and then every 3,000 after that. However, the RoyalAlloy.com website, which is traditionally aimed towards the Asian market, states 1,000 kilometres, which is 660 miles, and then 6,000 kilometres, which is 3,700 miles, and then every 6,000 kilometres after that. Now, as this engine is based on the Vespa GTS, that has a service interval of 1,000 kilometres and then 5,000 kilometres and then every 5,000 after that. So we think it's going to be around that figure. However, there's a little bit of confusion. So we don't know whether it's the traditional Royal Alloy UK route or whether it's changing for the Asian market. There hasn't really been some concrete information forthcoming on that. Thank you. Oops. He's still learning. 
I don't know if that was you doing that to me or whether that was your phone. Oh, hello. Thank you very much. Uh, as soon as it went, mate, it was just like, ah, oh, no. Move on. Yeah. Oh, hey, shut up. <laughs> so, when you do get your manual with the bike, they are going to be online little USB stick manuals rather than a paper one. Although they may have some paper ones coming. That is yet to be finalised, which is slightly annoying because the bikes are here. So, you know. And they've had a year, so, you know, get where are they? Yeah. Yeah. Get on with it. <laughs> anyway, to sum up, back to the bike, the important bit. 100% impressed. As you know, traditionally, I'm not a scooter person, and he's not a scooter person. He rides a Fireblade, I ride a Triumph, amongst a few other bits. And we're not traditionally scooter riders, but we've been so impressed with this scooter. And I think that is more important for a non-scooter rider to be so impressed with a scooter. Yeah, I mean, the engine makes a big difference for me being a bike rider that has got a nice, torquey, responsive engine in it. And that's what this has. It's smooth, it's not notchy as well. When you pull away, you can easily sit at 30 mile an hour, you can sit at 40 mile an hour, you can sit at 60 and then go further if you're on a dual carriageway. But um, I, you know, I, I really can't fault it. It's, uh, I thought when I was uh, going to ride it, you know, my legs together and my arms quite close together, it's going to feel a bit weird. But it really doesn't. It really is extremely well planted. It corners very nicely. It's so smooth. Really am impressed with it. Yeah. I really do recommend it. It's a, it's a good package. It's got the looks. It's got the good, you know, suspension feel now. And with that, let's say, with that extra on the 300 engine, the responsiveness of that, it just makes a good all-round package for me. Love it. Yeah. Now, sound-wise, they are actually quite quiet. Now, measured at 3,600 RPM. Yeah, I mean, it's 90 decibels uh, on idle and then 81 decibels on a typical drive-by. That's the one that doesn't include an Uzi. I'll get my coat. So some people might say that it looks just exactly the same as a 200. But we see that as a plus point because that's exactly what attracted people to this bike in the first place. Now, where the likes of Lambretta and Vespa have moved away from this traditional style that made them famous in the first place, Ball Alloy have clung to that look and I think it's the best thing they could have done. Good move. I mean, that is exactly what people are looking for. Unfortunately, Lambretta have decided, no, we're going to go modern. And Vespa, slightly modern also. And I don't think people are attracted to that style. They love this style of bike. And that's the point. So as far as I'm concerned, well done, Royal Alloy. Stick to this design. Don't change it. Agree? Agree. So there. What do you think? Please let us know in the comments section below. Now, the 300 does have this double LED up and down headlight arrangement, which I really do quite like, but has a very thin field of view. However, it does have the same clocks as the 125 and the 200 GPs. Right, a nighttime experiment just to see how good these LED lights are. Ah, OK, so we've got that, flash, or main beam. OK. Jamie, if you can step aside, please. That's pretty good. Pretty impressive. So, as a contrast, we're now going to do the GP125 with the traditional lights, and let's see how good that is. OK, that's the dip. Main beam. Jamie, if you can step aside, please. Wow. The LED lights are certainly a hundred times better. Impressive. OK, a lot of people are into these, also talk about the Scamaddy. Um, at the moment, they haven't produced a Euro 4 version. There is talk of a 400cc coming available, but very little is known about it at this time. 
So how much is this Royal Alloy GP300 then? Well, it comes to you at £4,899 on the road with a two-year parts and labour warranty. And I think that's pretty good. It's only a few hundred quid more than the 200 which is £300 cheaper than the Vespa GTS and is much better looking in my opinion. Mine too. What about yours? Now, when they first introduced or first discussed the idea of the 300, it was just after the 200 came out. And I think they recognised that was not a good idea because then they were saying, it's coming, it's coming, because I think they were scared about the Scamaddy and the 300. However, we had to wait a year and I think it's been worth the wait. It's an impressive, impressive bike. It rides superbly. As you can see, it goes really well. Very impressed. And I think the move to that Vespa engine was a fantastic move. So, well done, Royal Alloy. I can't really say anything negative about it. I wanted to pick something I was not happy with. And I'll be honest, I can't find anything that I don't like. No, I agree. It's a great overall machine. Yeah, it's very impressive. So, well done, Royal Alloy. Now, if you've got one of these, please let us know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. If you want one, please let us know. Um, I, <laughs> I, I really don't have anything negative to say. I must... something. Um, I don't like white. Storage. Yes, OK, fair enough. Storage. However, you do gain in tank what you lose in storage. But is that a compromise you're willing to live with? Would you prefer to have a bit more storage and less tank. I don't know. Is that a problem for you? So there you go. That brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. Please tune in next time when we're back with Project Bob and we're back with a Honda. And next week we've got something rather different. We're looking at two juicy looking Husqvarna's. Very excited about that. Mm -hmm. So tune in for that and of course we'll be back with Project Mac and Erinka and lots of other stuff as well. So once again, Happy New Year. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you very soon. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye. Bye.